Hey everyone, being a father, you know, having a job and everything is not easy, but I finally found the time again to go back to YouTube and make another guide for you. This time we're talking about the blood money deck, which you also have seen in the Challenger qualifiers. And if you like what I'm doing, subscribe to me and I would say, let's see what topics we're going to look on. We're going to look at the cards and combos of this deck. Then we're going to look at the gameplay plan. Then we're looking at the tactics we should apply against other factions and what you, what cards we should be wearing stuff. And then we're heading into two example matches to see how this deck actually plays out. So let's start. Let's start with the poison synergy within the deck. We have different cards that can apply poison to the enemy units. Uh, the best one to start is Morale, since he does it on deploy and then as an order ability, which is amazing because if the enemy purifies the poison away, you can still um, use this order ability to poison the enemy again and then use one of your other poison cards. So if you want to really go for, um, you want to make your poison go through, start with Morale. If he is killed and the poison is still on the enemy, which means again that you can play another poison card. If you would just play a poison card, the enemy has all these options to get rid of the, of the poison uh, before you are able to do another one with morale. Um, you are pretty sure that the unit will die you apply to poison too, which is pretty good. Fist deck gives you a four coin in addition. Uh, the mutated hounds also have the option that you can apply to bleeding on an enemy instead of the poison, which makes it a good card if you're not sure if all of the poisons go through. So you can wait with the mutated hounds until um, last, so if the enemy actually purifies the last poison away, you just play with the late towns for the two bleeding and everything is still fine. Uh, the Fistic Trafficker is kind of like our weakest poison card because it's a free plus poison and we can't give the option to use it on an, uh, one of our units to get free coins in addition. I've never used this so far, but if you are in a situation where like the free coins would really be useful to you, you can use it. So far it's only there to have like a bit more poison in the deck. So if you wonder what to mulligan away, if you have too much poisons, I typically use the Fistic Trafficker. So that's the poison package. Uh, we typically use this, depending on the enemy, we try to use poison as last as possible, except we already know that uh, a card will go go big, uh, like I don't know, a big common unit for example. Um, then we can also like d d use the poison right away. Otherwise we of course wanna keep it for good targets like Oak and so on. The next package is our Savola package, which consists of Madame Luisa, which makes our next tribute free. And since Savola has a big tribute, which is nine, uh, we typically want to play Madame Luisa and then Savola so we can get the Savola's Frightener, which is an 11 point body with six point armor for free in addition. This is typically your push package or your anti-push package, so to say, in round two. So I typically don't want to play this in round one. I don't want to play this in round three if I don't have to. If there is, uh, if the enemy just dry past me in round two, for example, and I can play it in round three, it's good. But typically, you want to win round one, and then we want to start up with Luisa. You want to play this Savala and this Frightener, and then you have put so much points on the board, um, you typically get a card up or you get some really valuable resources out of the enemy, uh, which is pretty good. And if you have this in round two and the enemy tries to push you, you can just drop Luisa. Sometimes they pass afterwards because uh, they know that uh, the Frightener is coming or you didn't actually play the Frightener for Savola and uh, suddenly you are up in points and the enemy is not really able to push you down. So that's a really good push package. Then our next package, and this is kind of our main package in the stack, is the Passiflora package. Um, this is our scenario which we play every time we play a one of the gang blind eyes. Um, we actually advance the scenario. First one on deploy, we actually get a slice of Ductress. The next scenario tick is that we get the Peaches on the board. Peaches are just four points, but as soon as long as we have four coins in the bank, so to say, I hold four, um, this will boost, those will boost by one every turn. And if you play another one, then uh, another blind side unit, uh, blind eyes unit, then we want, we'll get six coins just straight into our bank. And typically cards you want to trigger the scenario with is either Madame Luisa in preparation for Savola later, um, just the street urchins, just get some extra coin, get the bronzes out of, or just Adriano, because Adriano, if you actually pay the tribute, gets us another Slice of on the board. Uh, we can also just play a Slice of as well. So in the best case, we even have like three Slice of on the board, 
with the peaches ticking upwards uh, and those are quite some points in a long run free so i'm um, we're actually we're actually fine in playing a long run free as long as we are able to play the passiflora of course we need to protect the passiflora because there's a lot of artifact removal or yennefer's invocation and stuff like that sometimes even heat wave uh, so you want to protect the passiflora against this artifact removal which means that you typically start off in run free with your Azar Shavet, get two Scarabeuses out on the board, which means the enemy needs actually to get rid, get to uh, get for two units until it reaches the Passiflora, which in typically means that you can get uh, the Peaches out, maybe even the coins, and sometimes they even don't care about the coins anymore. Um, so you hopefully you can use the um, the last of the Scarabeus to even protect other engines. Uh, we only have two more engines that are really interesting for us. Uh, we have Imke and we have our Dire Mutated Hound. Imke gives us two points per turn on the range throw and uh, the Hound gives us two points per turn like as a buff on him, so to say, but only as long as his armor is active. We can pay four coins to get one armor, which is a bad trade, uh, but therefore we also get two points per turn again. So in, against an enemy, which actually has a hard time dealing this one point. This is an ability that makes sense, but if you play, for example, against Precision Strike, don't bother with it. <laughs> um, we also have other cards, for example, um, that can use the coins, but they are not engines really. For example, we have Eval, but Eval just gives us profit too. We need him typically together with Imke, um, uh, but it's not an engine himself. So those are the cards we want to protect. And then at some point you want to have a way to spend them. But this could be Seizure Car, this could be the Street Urchin, this could be Ewald. Um, we could even use it to protect our, um, to give shields to our Satellite Seductors, for example. There's a lot of stuff, but these two cards uh, are really giving you points per turn. Then I would say let's quickly look at how we want to play this deck. Round 1 is the most trickiest of the rounds because we don't want to commit a lot of stuff. But we also want to be in control, except against the faction that may want to push us and which we can easily counter push with the Savala package, but more about that later. So typically what we do is we want to try, uh, if you, for example on blue, we maybe want to start up with a Slice Ductress. If it sticks, it's a great engine. If not, the enemy actually needs to use something that has uh, a big removal. Um, so for example against Square Tail, we maybe get a Milane out, um, so which, is, which is pretty good. So we can start off with that. If the enemy starts, there is good. Typically, it's a good idea to maybe play a fist tag, for example, because then you keep your board clear. Um, the enemy can't use damage units on you, and you can even follow up then with uh, another poison to get something done right away. The best case, the enemy actually uses tact a tactical advantage to protect something right away, which is fist tag it, poison it next, done. Typically, I'm going to play a lot of poisons actually in round one, um, especially against stuff like harmony, for example. Um, but, other, but you also can just try to get cards out that don't have that much synergy or are not that in the packages we talked before. For example, the Passiflori package you want to keep for round 3, which means there are cards like Hammond that can help you uh, secure round 1. Uh, you may want to get plus Zodi out, you want to maybe play in a Dime Rotated Hound. Those are cards you want to commit in round 1. Maybe you can even get some coins by playing Witch Hunter on a unit, uh, which is Poison for example, then uh, by Morale. And just trigger morale to get the coins right away, uh, which can fuel your street urchins to just get uh, spent the coins in on one to actually win the round, um, or the like seizure call and so on. If you don't win the round one, it's not a bad thing, except you play against a deck that really has like engine capability and it wants to push you round one, uh, round two, which for example, Harmony typically tries to push you, uh, in, so you don't have like. Uh, so you're not sure when to commit your scenario, for example. That's when you want to push. Uh, in round two, you typically want to have like your, uh, your Savala package ready to anti-push and then you go into a long run free. The enemy pushes you in round two and you don't have the Savala package. Uh, you may want to think of playing the Passiflora package because by playing the Passiflora package, you, act, you may be able to overcome him points-wise already, your enemy. And if you don't have, for example, like Luisa and Savolo in a short run free, that's good as well. So you always need to think of when do you use your short run package and when you want to use your long run package. 
And if the enemy pushes you and you think you can overtake him right now with your short run package, do it. Otherwise, you want to commit your passive flora and then gonna use your short run package in a short round. Uh, also, round one is pretty good if you want to play, for example, urchins and stuff uh, because they have profit free. They can give you a bit of coin carry over for round two. So you can, for example, play Adriana right away in round two uh, with the tree with five uh, because otherwise you wouldn't have enough coin. Uh, but then he becomes a 10 point uh, play right away. And you have this engine in the form of Slice Adductress. So coin carry over is something you should consider. Um, but now let's look at factions because every faction kind of needs a different strategy to play against. So how do we play against Coyotel? There are currently two major decks up there, I would say. The first one is Harmony and the other one is Elven Swarm, both in different variants. Some using Precision Strike, some using different ones, um, so different deck lists as well. But the core sense of this deck stays the same. So let's look into both these for a quick second before we move on. Against Harmony, you're basically playing an engine versus engine deck. So the one who's able to get more engines on the board while denying more engines of the other one kind of wins the game. And Harmony has a ton of engines, but they have a different priority. For example, the Percival can give you two ticks of Harmony per Harmony tick, so to say. So that's something you definitely should keep your poison package for to get rid of it. And what's also good is, since he can, what also good is for you, I mean, is they have Waters of Broccoli on getting two engines up on the same turn on the board, two dried fledglings. But you can use your blood money, and you could also use Philippa to just steal both of them and essentially denying them the whole Waters of Broccoli, for example, which hurts quite a bit, I would say. Um, one thing you should also notice is that they have the that they have the trained hawk. And the trained hawk is especially dangerous to your MK, because if you play an unprotected MK against Sugatel, they just use the trained hawk, move it over to melee row, and you have a problem. The same can happen in Elven Swarm if they play Malena, typically don't. Um, but they also have Kirin typically, and Kirin locks you and then moves it to another row, so <clears throat> you actually have to double <laughs> for it in one card. Um, even if you could put it for the lock away, so to say. Um, Elven Swarm has a different problem. Elven Swarm doesn't go high, which means your poison package won't have that much impact, but they go tall instead. Meaning, you probably want to focus on um, cards that, like like Ewald, which can you can utilize your coins to deal damage to them, to get rid of the Elven Dead Eyes to spawn, for example. Maybe use a Philippa, um, trying to just push them also in short rounds so they are not able to set up a big swarm but only like part parts of the swarm so you typically want to play two big rounds in, in, in the best case so you kind of want to split up your rounds which you can do better than they do so splitting up rounds is, I think the best way to do it and in addition using Ewald to get rid of the swarm when they want to go with big cards like Isengrim and stuff. Let's check Northern Bombs then. In Northern Realms, I think there are currently two prevalent decks. One is the Siege Bombardment deck, and the other one is the Commando Inspired Seal deck. The first one is very dangerous to your engines because they have a lot of ways to deal with them for damage uh, for damaging. This could be a simple bombardment, there could be the boiling oil, could be um, other damaging stuff. But they are especially <laughs> they're especially dangerous because Philippa, for example, Falipo, for example, can deal with multiple defenders at once. The boiling oil can also purify your defenders. So your Azar Chavette is not as impactful as against other factions, um, which means you should really think of when to play him because typically you don't get two turns where you're protected, but only one turn where they can just play Falipo, where they can play the oil and stuff to get rid of them. So just keep that in mind. Also keep in mind to not play the range row because they have the trebuchets, you can always play melee row. If they boost the trebuchet, of course they can still hit the melee row, but you know, why give them the free points if you can avoid that? And always think of that there could be a Kira waiting, so if you want to if you want, uh, place a Kira, you may want to have cards like Ewald Posod is an answer to right away deal with the units the Kira buffed up or Vitality up, maybe even Philip I Philippa Eilhard to steal the Vitality boost of Kira, otherwise the unit can go really high and you only have a limited amount of poison packages. Against commanders, you poison package won't do a lot of stuff again because they go 
kind of wide again instead of kind of tall. So against commanders, what you need to do is you need to prevent the commanders from spawning. If the player commander, they're not even, they're not boosting it right away so it can um, get other commanders out, try to kill it right away, maybe even use a blood money for that. If they can't set up commanders, you probably have won the game. And if they can set up commanders, then it's most like it's really important for you that you push them in round two into a scenario where they need to figure out if they want to pull out commanders now through um, Pavetta, like putting the Pavetta the back in the deck and then pulling out of Roche, for example, uh, in round two already, so they don't have to in round three. It's even worth to go a card down for that because that's their power spike. The rest of the power of the deck is not as high as the commander package. So if you can get that out in round two already and just pass, then you can. Use your high cards, maybe a Passiflora for you in round three, maybe the Savola Luisa package. Maybe you want to push in round two with the Passiflora package and like play in the short round the Savola Madame Lisa. Um, that's the kind of thing you need to do against this deck. Split the rounds, try to get the commanders out, or try to prevent them from creating them at all. Let's look at Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard, there are well, a lot of different decks, but I'd rather focus on different cards. I think there are like, two different decks are uh, right now prevalent, like Enslave and um, Soldiers. Um, but let's look at just some cards, because it's the cards that are really, you need, really to, pull out, uh, need to play around against, plus the decks themselves. Uh, first, of course, the, uh, the scenario. Um, there are not a lot of decks currently playing the scenario, but if you see the scenario, what you need to what change in your strategy is your, uh, your engines probably will go down, which means, again, go rather wide, then rather tall, uh, which means you probably want to focus more on coins, for example, maybe get a good defender out, stuff like that. The main threat in Nilfgaard, which you encounter a lot, and I think nearly in every deck, is either uh, Damien or Skellen, most of the time both, actually. Uh, with Damien refreshing your lead, uh, lead, uh, the, lead, the leader ability of your enemy, and Skellen uh, in enabling you to play another tactic card, like the last tactic card, um, the enemy has played before, so giving you them two primaries, for example, uh, and like Damien giving you another, or giving them another eight points of value. So those are the cards you need to kill, and that's the problem because typically they want to protect those cards. They want to play them when they think you out of options, which means you need to keep those options. You need to kill them within the turn. If they play a defender, you need to deal with the defender ASAP. Otherwise, you have no way of dealing with those cards which means poison is not uh, quick enough. Cards like Ewald can help you. Ewald can, if you have like a lot of coins, you can deal and uh, kill the defender. Maybe you need to use your blood money in addition with Ewald to get rid of the defender. Maybe you need to play good for Lipper, just to steal the defender on your side. Um, what also helps is a morale, because a morale can set up like a, double, uh, a poison, and if they don't deal with it, because they can't deal with it if they want to play a Damien or Skeleton next turn, then you get the double poison through the deploy and the order ability of morale on the defender, which enables you to, to then deal with uh, Skellen or Dam uh, Damien afterwards for either your blood money or for another card. So those are cards you want to keep if you want to play against Nilfka to deal with those threats because they're really, really dangerous. Uh, another threat, especially in Enslave, for decks that play a lot of tactics, is the Helga. So if you want to, if you encounter Hefty Helga, you can kill it in multiple turns because it's, it has a shield. If you have uh, Evaposodium board, you may be able to kill it. The best solution typically is to just alert it, especially if the order ability is still uh, active. So you can actually damage from the order ability as well. Um, also, don't forget they have a lot of removal cards. Assassination is not their only removal card. They also sometimes, especially in Slave, play Tourney Just, for example. Um, there's Yennefer's Invocation, and so on. So, against Nilfgaard, establish more engines if you can, then only rather one, because they will die. Uh, also, like just opening up, with, for example, a Slice Ductress into uh, Tourney Just is also probably not the most optimal one. So, if you want to have them stick to the board, you may want to establish other units first. So for example, the assassination doesn't six damage anymore, but only four, or f let's say five. Um, but you also want to protect them with Aza Shavit first. Let's go with monsters. Monsters is kind of the same as Nilfgaard. Monsters are actually not really prevalent on the ladder at all. So there are not a lot of top tier deck. I heard there's like any core deck currently around that should be interesting, but I haven't seen that so far. 
Um, anyway, so let's talk about cards here as well. Uh, one card you need to look at is the Predatory Drive, which means if you play a big unit, right, as the first card, you can just Predatory Drive it and you lose your full unit. So um, if you play against monsters, you want to maybe play a lower unit first. Maybe start up with Street Urchin, Urchins instead of Valam Lisa, for example. Um, that helps you. Or like an engine, worst case. Like if they, if you play, for example, Seductress, you can just Predatory Dive it. So think of playing something lower at first, so Predatory Dive is not as dangerous to you. What is dangerous, though, is Ziggurin and Osril. So against monsters, you can't really push round two because they just answer with big 13-point Ziggurin. If you destroy it, they just play Osril and get like 40 points on the board again. So um, just try to be sure that either you deal with, you're able to deal with those with, for example, poison, or that you just not try to push against them in round two because Savola and Luisa won't, like give you a lot of tempo, but this is a lot of tempo as well. Then they also have other units that go high. So against monsters, your poison package will be really, really useful. Uh, I think most, Monster decks, except some Thrive decks, go high, and even the Thrive decks, you find some good um, choices to, to poison because they typically run Oswald and stuff as well. Um, anyway, those are targets, like the Glastic Warp, for example. Um, yeah, you want to keep your poison on, so if you're in the Mulligan, try to get rid of stuff like Siege of Cut, etc., and look for the poison package because that will serve you better than if you just go for, I don't know, the points, let's say. And then, I think we talked about all factions. Let's head into two example matches and let's go. with the elf Eternal Fire lights our way. The eternal fire will light our way. We are going first, and here's elves. It means this will die probably if we play it first, but still not a bad play first card. Which aren't uh, we have Ewald, we have Poison, so it's actually not too bad. On the other hand, we only hit Freeze probably with Witch Hunter, so I'm not too sure about that. But Evil is good to get rid of them, so I'm not sure if we wanna actually. I could probably keep this. The rest I wanna keep for later rounds, kinda. Hammond is just a good play, but I don't know. Actually, let's keep this. I'm not sure if it's that smart, but yeah. so there we go. So Doctorus comes out. Let's see if it dies right away. I should have played the lamp because of the Elven Commander thing. My bad. Should have done that right away. Against the Midwinter Wanderer. Well, it's Melane anyway. So that could happen. Something cannot be Inside is Question is, do we start off with Witch Hunter? We probably don't get a better, something better than for anyway. Let me go Imkin now. Not sure if you can get rid of Imkin up quickly. Can move it maybe. She, she, whatever. Gender pronouns, I tell you. It. <laughs> so, Imke. I think he can move Imke. That's probably the most efficient way. Other than that, he probably needs two turns. That's where we can set up maybe Hitch Witch Hunter, maybe Zodi. Maybe Poison stuff. Yeah, that's Lock Test. Uh. Some better poison now. I think we can take this. Take the poison. Dies too soon. Question is if you want to be greedy and play the witch hunter. Don't think so, because you can't kill Evil that quickly anymore. Because my lane is out. So we may just want to play. Okay. We can play witch hunter now since it's pretty fun. Okay. Our pirates will light up the north! So, okay, we got now a lot of coins to get rid of the Swordmaster, for example, as well. Question is how if we want to commit both Sodi actually in this, uh, in this round or not. On the other hand, I'm not sure what else is going to commit. Hounds are okay, the rest, maybe a Hammond. 
Yeah, there's something I wanna kill, I guess. But if we're going to play with Zoe now, he will go out of the round. And then he's going to swarm. So we need to push next round, which means we need to find the Savola. So do we do it or not? I'll recover all it was every last copper. So this should be enough to convince him to go after round, I guess. If not, we may pass even. I mean, it's an option, right? What big crits does he have? He can't play stuff like Oak because he doesn't have to do board support for it. <clears throat> Probably would need to play some ambushes here. Some Elven Dead Eyes. Some ambushes. <laughs> some Dead Eyes. So I'm not sure if he should play into this. It's 18 points with two cards. It's Potentially doable, especially if the support of a uh, dead eye. But for me, it's fine, I guess, if I get it out. On the other hand, maybe it's worth for him to control round two because he can set up his big push. Yeah, he's going to first night. Look at this. Death ruled one. So he gets six points on top of what he plays next, which means he is at thirteen. Which means he needs to play at least a 9 point card, which is an elf. On the other hand, if we get the big card out of him, we already got scenario out of him. I don't see why this is not fine to pass. Because our rest of the hand is not that good as well. I mean, it's pretty okay, like the card wise, but. It's so energetic wise, it's not something I want to play here in round one. So I think it's fine to pass here. He needs to commit still a lot, and we got scenario. So. Show me the elves, or give me some uh, dead eyes from leadable team. This because he played scenario here. This is makes also his swarm. If he wins round one later, less dangerous. Can still play a lot of the dead eyes, but uh, this is Elven. Uh, there you go. Upon which your kind dies. And yeah, we got another swarm cut out of him, which is pretty good. Okay. And Eleren. We wouldn't even need to play that. I forgot about Eleren himself, I guess. <laughs> I mean, good for me. But this is this is really good. We got Eleren out. We got some good swarm cuts out. I like the outcome of this. Okay, we have cards we can drop. Let's keep the Hound, for example. Uh, I like the Hound, I want to drop. I could also drop a Seductress or a Blacksmith. Actually, the Hound is something I don't want to have in hand. Oh, this is perfect now. This is good, and we don't even need to lock it up with Vivaldi. We have two Blind Eyes. We only have those cards to spend crowns, kinda. Let's see. If we pass right away. I'm gonna spend the Seductress. I think it will become an engine matchup, not less of a control matchup, so. Probably the blacksmith is not needed. Listen, I'll just work here. Let's see. Okay, we can start off with. Javed, we can go into passive flower. Then we go into a lot of seductresses. Get the peaches out. Thanks to Madame Luisa. We have Isleheart. Isle is a great way to spend the coins. Sora, I don't like the poison package. This is also good, I guess. Yeah, this is even better. Now we have a lot of ways to get crowns and stuff. So, first of all. Where do we play? Does it matter too much? I mean, it matters in the sense of the archer, but other than that, we can just play Miro because we also don't have Imki anymore. So let's do that. I guess. Okay, so protection is there. 
You probably kill one of the protectors right away. Can't kill two, I think. And then going straight into the Passiflora. A protected Passiflora is a good Passiflora. I don't want to get bomb fevered or whatever. Sure. <laughs> Needs to start getting rid of this Carabiner. This is. What engines does he have? Is it sensible to kill that? You will get some value, it can kill us Carabiasis. Let's get rid of it. The longer those are there, the better for me. So let's do it like this. First the Ductus is out, We're following up with a Mink right away. It's also not a bad thing to have because now we can actually get the can actually get the tribute on to the Elven Land. Sure, of course, one's down, but now we get the pizzas out. And we pay the tribute for another Zectress. And then we can actually play this another Zectress to get the coins. And then we have a Philippa with a 5 enabled, which is good. And we also get the, the peaches here, so cool. Because currently they're not boosting, but as soon as we get the coins, they will do. So let's do that. And there's the coins. It's actually six, yeah, not four. And now we have an engine ticking. Three seductresses on the board. Scorch would hurt right now, to be honest. What's going on? At least it's not going to be a Scorch. Yeah, okay. He wants to... What? Hit something? We will not yeah, he won't be able to kill something. Yeah, there we go. It's over. Nice. The fire but the decision strike again. Well. And we're first. Can play as a Doctress, I guess. Maybe you can force some lane out right away. Poison. Witch Hunt is not a bad thing. I guess we don't need the Street Urchins then. We have the Chakal. See, Flora I kinda need for later. Not sure about Adriana here. It's not sure about the Witch Hunter here. I guess we need to spend some coins. So. Let's see. Why does we protecting it from the Elfin Commander who can just some damage. Let's see. Mr. Riches. Riches. Good, so at least this was why, which is a good thing. It's just a free, like, poison is really not, it's really not useful against this guy. But except boys, we don't really have something else to play. We could play bank, but bank is also way better later. We could get anything right now. That's not something I want to have. Could play the hounds for damage instead of poison, so they're like five. But even with poison, they would be. What do we would need coins? Because I'm thinking of. I mean, you could. One poison is definitely not bad. Gives us free coins, which we can use to boost the seizure call later. Free is just not enough. We could play Adriana after that. This is just seems to play, but what else do I play? There are no options! I don't have options. I could have played this as a 5, but it won't meet me around, so... It's not really something I want to do, I guess. Don't like the hand. Yeah, he didn't purify it now. If I play Bounty, 
I can get my coins in here. Looks more like Elvis Form right now. Magic sows chaos. So at least we get free coins now, which, we could, which could mean that we could play Adriana next turn. Huh, give me a second. Okay, it's not a trend board, it's another thing I want to poison for sure. And then we just see how we how this turns out. We perfect dead now, we don't have another poison, so that's a good thing to do. Alright, just going for value here. He's just going for value here. Yeah, that doesn't help him. Yeah. Some damage here. Aetherin is good for him. But so is this one for us. Could play Mink now. This really doesn't do a lot of stuff. Mink gets us an Asic Dectris. It's like a 10 point play. Which we kind of need to stay ahead, I guess. I'm not sure if he can contest it on to be honest. It's going all Elven Swarm on us. The only good human is a dead human. It's already 10 points difference if I play this and not even getting ahead here. Uh, so I kinda don't wanna play this there. Because if I play this, I'll lose that drama. Let's pass. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Way more poisons against elves. One poison is really not what, I'm, what you wanna what I'm gonna have. Can probably drop that. That's pretty really good, I guess. I mean, really good is that's good. He needs to play at least a card. And ideally, mine is higher. So this is again the question here. We could go blood money Philip on him right away. Or we play scenario if he passes. But then it would be unequal. Yeah, I think I need to do it. I've no mercy for your kind. So at least I'm ahead now, maybe we can get back card advantage, even though I lost the leader charge for it. Let's see. Yeah, that's the pass. So I got back card advantage. But for the price. If we can protect the Passiflora, maybe we can make this work, and maybe then the poison can do some work at the end. I think it's not the worst that had happened to me here. So, hammer is okay. Uh, we don't need the siege call. Free poisons, I don't like it. This is good to have. Ink, uh, we can, how can we spend the coins to blacksmith? So we're actually doing this in range now. I need to protect the ink here as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we start off with the Passiflora. Trying to get the stuff out. This is something we could just go to poison away. Yeah. Just poison it away. And there is the Passiflora. Not sure if you can. He's not able to get rid of it. Can't get two of those then, especially since he doesn't have... I mean, theoretically could, right? You could use the all precision strikes to get rid of this. <coughs> Sorry. And then he could maybe do something to Passiflora. 
That's the question he needs to think of. So, yeah. Okay, just move that out of the way. Which is not too bad, we actually have, to, have something to protect him either. Way. Okay. It doesn't. It's not really dangerous for me because we at least get the peaches out. Um, so I guess let's do that. We need to get the urchins out first because otherwise we can't get the tribute. So there are the peaches. Question is, do we want to have shielded? I think so. Next will be Adriano into another slice of and then we're going to start with MK, I think. Does it make sense to play MK now? And this is two points per turn, this is only one point per turn if he plays a unit. Sure, he can kill the street urchins. We could have boosted this by one and still be able to pull it. No, actually, no, never mind. We could, it's fine. Does he have one hand? Don't kill my peaches. Follow me this way. Okay. I guess in that case. Boy, Let's go for another spectrus. I have six point uh, six coins. <laughs> Thanks to the Passiflora. Let me play MK and then we need to start getting rid of coins. We wanna go for a Bosodi. This one would also be okay. I mean, he would probably be able to deal with it. Sure. I mean, Imke first, that's... Keeps a single lover in every part. That is clear. And then we play Blacksmith of War. Either we need to look for Spender again, or Sori, for example, or we look for the Hound. Sure. It didn't hand actually, really good for me. So now we need to start spending. Better than paying taxes. Yeah, I think it's enough for now. We get two more, and then we can play bank next turn. To actually access all our cards. And we can choose if you go for Hound or probably for another Spender. At this point I think another Spender is maybe not a bad thing. Why did he poison? Oh yeah, he got shield. So Oak will hit for three, six, eight. So we want to get this maybe to 9. You can also go for Zavala to be honest. Well Zavala is not in... Was all really late here. Still fun. Give me three minutes and come to me. Um. Let's go We'll help one. Ah. I wanted to get rid of his oak value, which we can do in the next turn, I guess. I also can use this to get something into the back row. <laughs> so he just kills one of my spenders now, which is fine. At this point, I'm probably going to fist stick so I have like, all the value for my, my blacksmith. Something like this, I guess. Sure. Now we will see who 
He's weak. Orc is incoming. Let's shoot the tracer ball. Let's blast this up. MK is really doing a good job here. Bleeding won't really get full value, but hey. Yeah, we got at least. Is it not one of those? Really? Not sure. Okay, let's see. I mean, we are pretty good ahead. Oh, won't be able to do that. There we go. 